Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to the westernmost point of this tiny garage. We're all set up today to start with an unboxing, but if I'm being honest, I was born impatient, and so while this is a cool thing, we're gonna do that later. This is also a cool thing. We're gonna do that later. Another cool thing. We're gonna do that later. And so this is the thing I care about. Let's open this thing up. Yay. The Bentley Workshop Manual for this car. Let's go rip some up. Here's the plan. We're gonna take this small camera and we're gonna poke it through the spark plug holes and look inside the cylinders and get an idea of what the condition of the engine is right now. To do that, it's gonna be much easier if we raise the car up using our fancy dancy new Porsche jack adapters. And then we're gonna take the bumper off. Now to take the bumper off, you're gonna to need, to take the wheels off is much easier. We have this 17 mil socket right here to do that. That's gonna gain access to the wheel arches where there is two crosshead screws that you need to take out. There's also four more crosshead screws across the top here. And then underneath there are two more crosshead screws. And you're done with those. To take off these little bumper extensions, you're gonna need an extension with a six millimeter Allen wrench. And then also on the bottom quarter on either side, there are two either side, four total, of these T30 uh, screws that you'll need to take off. Now, once we get the bumper off, we're a step closer to being able to look inside the engine. The bumper is off now, really was not that difficult. The only thing is I would add is this electrical connector here, you gotta press this button, little tab, and pull the other half out. That was the answer to that one. And then at the very front of the bumper here, this black plastic part, which uh, covers the heat shield for the mufflers, at the front it matches this shape of the bumper, and you need to separate pull away that black plastic part and on both sides and then shimmy the bumper off and that's it. So we are now ready for the next step. These heat shields come off just with a bunch of 10 mils. Now that we have the heat shield off, we can get a much better view of what's going on in here. What we're trying to do is get to three spark plug holes that are on the other side from here. On a straight six engine, or a inline four, very common engines, the cylinders are sitting straight up in the air and you can get to the spark plugs from the top, that's like very common. On a V6, those cylinders are V'd off at an angle and so you can get to three cylinders on a slight uh, angle on one side, three cylinders on the other side. This is a flat six engine, and so those cylinders are horizontally opposed. You've got three facing the other side and three facing this way. Now to get to that, we need to, you can get to that without removing the muffler, but we want lots of space. This muffler uh, doesn't have anything going on on this side. Um, there's just a, a pipe coming in and a pipe going out. There are two bolts on the other side in here that can be undone underneath. So if we undo those, those are the main bolts holding this uh, muffler in place. And then this pipe, which is coming from the three cylinders on the other side of the engine, it comes in here, the exhaust gases go just around in here and come out the top pipe. And then that top pipe, believe it or not, goes to this tip. And so the exhaust from the opposite side of the engine is actually coming out of this muffler. So we need to take this off on both sides. So it seems to be two bolts, one here, one here, and then there's a bracket just down this pipe right here, you can see it. And uh, there's two bolts on there that we need to take off. Now exhausts are notoriously difficult to take off because of rust issues. Even in California, it can be a problem. And so, uh, I took the liberty of putting a few ounces of this WD-40 on every single bolt that I'm gonna be taking off and letting that soak for a few minutes. That will hopefully make this job less crappy.
the driver's side is done and here we are on the passenger side. The driver's side wasn't quite as straightforward as I, as I was expecting. Um, this bolt here, which goes up and down, there's one here and then there's one in the front. It's the main bolt that's holding this muffler on. Uh, when you try to move the bolt up, I got it undone okay, but when I tried to move the bolt up, it collided with this strip of metal right here. And to get it out, I ended up taking off this heat shield, which is two 13 mils at the top, two 13 mils underneath here, which I had to use an extension to get underneath to do that. And then uh, I actually had my daughter tap this guy up with a hammer while I pulled the muffler out. And that way the uh, screw, which is quite a long screw, was able to clear um, this piece of metal and get the muffler off. Now on the other side of the muffler, it has these two bolts that join it to the other side of the exhaust and they had uh, 17 millimeter bolts on them. So 13 mil for all of this stuff and then a 17 mil on this collar. And that's it, let's take this one off. Any of you out there that know what you're doing must have found that last segment to be particularly cringeworthy and difficult to watch. Because as it turns out, and if I had read the instructions in the book that I bought, um, these two bolts, yeah, they do attach to the muffler, but to take it off the engine, there's three 13 millimeter bolts on the other side of those studs right there. Porsche, in their infinite wisdom, have made a lovely little space here that you can put your hand in with your wrench and what have you, and then look, Bonk. So don't do it the way I did it, do it that way. The next thing we need to take off is this heat shield for the coil packs. You can see the three coil packs just behind it right there. And there's two 10 mil bolts, one right here. You're gonna have to trust me, there's one just behind there as well. So we're gonna undo those and hopefully that heat shield will just pop off. The heat shield came off very easily with just those two 10 millimeter bolts. The next thing we have to do is take off the coil packs. They have two five millimeter Allen wrench bolts on them. And so let's take them off next. Okay, I've got the bolts out now for the coil packs. And the next thing you have to do is disconnect them. They, they will come out pretty easy right now. But if you pull up this little plastic piece here, it should go up, hello. There we go. And then you can easily see that clip, which you can press it with a cover on it, but now you can sort of see it easier. If you press that in, lift up this little tab, and it can come off, and then that guy should come out. Woohoo, okay. Coil pack, um, I'm not sure which number it is really, but coil pack number one for me actually getting them out. Finally now, we get to take the spark plugs out with our spark plug socket here, a uh, fairly long extension. For the middle, you know, for the back one here, kind of doing that, and then once it's in there, putting the socket on, hopefully that will work. Finally now, we get to put this small camera into the spark plug holes and have a look inside the cylinders. What are we gonna find? Oh no! Oh my God. I think it's time we get back to that unboxing. So the first thing that we have in this little bag looks like a hockey puck, it totally does. This little shape here fits into the um, jack points on the Porsche and makes it a little bit more stable. And uh, these were really cheap. I'm gonna try it out and see if it's any good. So we just got one of them, uh, that will work for now. This guy, I'm gonna put a winch into the end of this tiny garage so that to help pull the car in and out until the engine gets running. And um, this is a plate that goes on the ground. Oh, this is the Hawes Fair Lead, which helps guide the cable through. These screws are for the Hawes Fair Lead, so those are gonna work just fine. That doesn't have a hard life, or those screws don't. Um, and so here is the winch, it's a 1500 pound, what is it, it has a cool name. It is a Badland winch. 
And it plugs into the wall and it's got buttons on it to move the car in and out more easily. The screws and bolts on it, um, these are the ones that are supposed to attach it to the bumper of a car. And so I'm not gonna use those. I'm gonna use these concrete anchors instead. Um, and then oh, these three screws are the ones that attach the winch to this plate. And so I wanna make sure that these are really strong. So what I did was I replaced them with the same sort of screw, but in stainless steel. So that should be a bit stronger. Cause really it's these three screws that are holding the whole car ultimately. All right, so that's that. Now, to drill into concrete, you need a pretty decent drill. After the research I did, you can rent these, but they were uh, unavailable to rent when I went to look. And so I bought this guy. According to the tool guy, this is the, um, for the money, the best thing you can get to do this job. It's a Milwaukee a rotary hammer drill. And so this should be destructive enough for us to get those anchors in the ground and mount this winch. And let's get going on that. Everything is ready now to start installing this winch. And um, we have the hammer drill here, which for that we do need um, this uh, carbide drill bit. This is a 3 8 inch, 6 inch intended for cutting concrete. So that's going to work well. And we've got some ear protection, gloves, screwdriver, eye protection, hammers, various other destructive things. And uh, let's see if we can get this thing in place in a timely manner. I'm expecting a lot of dust, so I do have this extractor fan set up, and then the car is covered. Here we go. Hello. It's connected. I want to see if it works. To be able to pull this thing out and connect it to the tow hook, you have to pull out the clutch, which frees up the mechanism. Here we go. Let's connect that guy up there. And then the clutch probably pops off by itself, but we'll, we'll turn the clutch off right there. Um, and I think this guy is gonna pull it in. Whee! Oh. It work. Ah! All right. Will that work? Later that same evening. So what nightmare did I witness inside the cylinder? Oh my God. This is the image that I saw on the fuzzy boroscope screen, which my brain immediately processed into one of these nightmares where the pistons have hit the valves and grenaded the engine. The best I'm hoping for right now is that this car has been smoking 20 packs a day since birth and the piston surface has just some crusty carbon buildup on it. The next plan is to shoot some video of the inside of each cylinder while turning the engine really slowly by hand. Hopefully that will tell us a little bit more about the health of the engine. That's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time. Rear bumper, it's best if you're if you're gonna need a 17 mil uh, socket to do the lug wrenches. Oh my god. What? <laughs>